I'm gonna go ahead and replace our rear pads and rotors, located right behind your back wheel, here and here. Using our 22 millimeter socket, we're gonna loosen and remove our lug nuts. Okay, and grab your wheel, set that aside. On the back side of a brake caliper right here, there is a rubber boot. Yours may or may not have it. Ours has it. It's a rubber dust boot. We're gonna go ahead and use our pick and we're gonna pop this off. Underneath is a brake bleeder screw. We're gonna go ahead and use a 10 millimeter wrench or socket. We wanna loosen this to the, just a little bit so that brake fluid starts coming out of that port. And then we're gonna snug it back down. Now we did break it free. I'm gonna go ahead and switch over to a wrench here. This way here, we can see the fluid start to come out as we do right now. And what we wanna do, we just wanna snug that up just a little bit, just so that the fluid stops. And then we'll give that a wipe down. We use our 12 millimeter socket and ratchet. We're gonna loosen and remove our two slide pin bolts here, holding our caliper to the bracket. Get loosen and remove those there. We're gonna go ahead and separate our caliper from the bracket. We can use our pry bar. And we just kind of gently work this back and forth. Work that free. Go ahead and spin our caliper up, set that on top. Get to remove our brake pads. Using our 17 millimeter socket and ratchet, we're gonna go ahead and loosen and remove the two bolts holding our caliper bracket. Now we're removing this last bolt. You wanna be careful because once that bolt comes out, the bracket will fall off. Go ahead and spin that bolt out, remove the caliper bracket, set it aside. Now we wanna go ahead and remove our brake rotor. Our particular vehicle has two Phillips headset screws right here, and these are simply there to hold the rotor in place during assembly. If your vehicle does not have these, it is not critical to the vehicle or safety. Remove these screws and set them aside. We did use a Phillips head screwdriver to go ahead and do that. Now our rotor is stuck to our hub. We're simply gonna use a dead blow hammer that's free, go ahead and grab that and just work it off and set it aside. What we're gonna do is use our little wire brush here and wanna clean the hub face here. We wanna try and get any residual rust nuggets or flakes off of this here that might prevent our brake rotor from sitting nice and flush on the hub face. Now that we're cleaned up, we're gonna put some anti-seize compound around the flange here. We're using the brush on here we usually use a spray on, but we don't want to get any of the overspray on the emergency brake pads in the back there. Now, if you're going to be reusing your screws here to anchor that rotor, you want to go ahead and make sure that you line up the holes appropriately. Push that on. Let's go ahead and install our two screws. Now, if your original rotor had the rubber plug that goes here, you wanna go ahead and swap it over and put it onto this one here. Ours didn't have it, and we're gonna to have to source one afterwards, but if you have that plug, go ahead and pop that in there. And we're gonna go ahead and rebuild our caliper bracket here. We're gonna use our pry tool here. Go ahead and pop this out. Do that for the other side. Next, we wanna go ahead and remove our slider pins here with our rubber boots. You want to start by making sure these pivot, and ours are pivoting nice. 
I'm gonna go ahead and stretch this out. You wanna inspect the rubber boots all the way around. Check for any tears, anything that may uh, allow for water or dirt to get inside. Both of ours are good. So we're next gonna peel the rubber boot back off of the pin and slide our pin out. Do the same for this one here. You can also go ahead and pull the rubber boot out. Just pry that gently, work your way around and pop that out. Now starts the cleaning process for our bracket. Let's go ahead and use your wire brush. You wanna clean any of the scaly rust out from where our slider brackets for our pads would be placed. If yours is in a rough shape, you can use a flat file and clean that up. Go ahead and repeat for the other side. Now we wanna clean both bores where our slider pins go. I'm gonna spray some solvent in there. You wanna be wearing gloves and safety glasses when doing this. We use our bore brush and pretty much go in and out. Doing this process is gonna clean any of the old grease out of there. We do this a couple times, flushing it out. Go ahead and pat down, wipe this down. We're gonna use some solvent, clean our slide pins. When doing this, you wanna carefully inspect the slider pins, check for any type of scoring, rust, any damage to these here, they wanna be nice and smooth. Do the same for this one here. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply a little bit of grease in our ports here. And we don't want to put a whole ton of grease in there because it can actually hydrolock where the pins are going to go into. Let's go ahead and take our boots, press those in a position. Once again, if your boots are torn or damaged, you definitely need to replace those. It's not an option. Replace them while you're here. With those boots placed in there. Super thin coat of grease on these here. But you do want to make sure that they are covered. Slide those in. Pop that on. Go ahead and repeat for the other side. Once you have those in place, what we're gonna do is flip this up and use some grease. I'm not gonna coat it, we just wanna put a thin layer in here. Once you have that on there, and take your slider here that up. You want to press that into place. Let's go ahead and repeat for the other side. Make sure those are fully seated and your caliper bracket is now fully rebuilt. Go ahead and slide our brake caliper bracket into place. and get one of the bolts started here. Once that's started, we'll go ahead and get the other one put in. Now at this point, we wanna go ahead and compress our piston back into our caliper. Earlier, we had loosened our bleeder screw. We're gonna now go ahead and do this. Gonna open that up. We're going to put our 
compression tool in here. And we're going to slowly squeeze this. Fluid is going to come out. So we have a catch can underneath to catch that residual fluid. I'm going to push in that piston. Once that's fully compressed, I'm going to go ahead and tighten this back up. What this does is it relieves the pressure, makes it a lot easier for this to go in and doesn't cause any backward pressure on our ABS systems or anything like that. Go ahead and wipe this down. Remove your tool and you can hang this up again. What we're gonna do is install our squeal tab here. And it goes right on the corner, right in this notch. And this is gonna go on our inboard pad on the lower section. So this simply snaps on. There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and line this up and we're gonna put this into our inboard pad placement here. Install our outboard pad. I'm going to bring our caliper around. Slide that into place. I'm gonna get our upper bolt lined up. Get that caught a couple threads and do the same for the bottom. Let's go ahead and get our lower pad lined up. And I'm going to spin these bolts in by hand. And then we'll go ahead and snug those down. Let's get and snug down these bolts. Once these are snug, we're just going to do a quick wipe down here. Make sure there's no residual brake fluid here. Let's go ahead and torque our brake caliper bracket to 65 foot-pounds. And repeat for the lower bolt. Get and torque down our caliper bolts to 27 foot-pounds. Do the same for the upper. Let's go ahead and install our boot. Once you're done here, you don't want to go ahead up underneath the hood, check your master cylinder, check for the brake fluid, top it off as necessary, pump up your brakes, make sure everything is good. If you have a soft brake pedal or the brake pedal doesn't feel right, you want to go ahead now and begin your brake bleeding process. Go ahead and install your wheel. Once you get this installed, we're going to install all of our lug nuts. We'll snug them up. Then we'll put the car down on the ground and we'll torque them down. Let's go ahead and torque down our lug nuts to 95 foot-pounds. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.